to Bibliophiles Anonymous, episode 39. I'm Denise. And I'm Jess. And tonight we're going to talk a little bit about how we're doing on our 2013 book reading goals and talk a little bit about some of the favorite things that we've done or read or some things that the podcast has done so far for the year since it is officially halfway through. Where did this year go? I don't know. It can't be June. It's almost July, honey. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's not possible. No, I was looking at my calendar at work today, and there's a lot of things that we have to do at the end of the month, and all of that is happening. Well, we're recording this on Thursday, and so it's all happening tomorrow. And I'm like, no, it's it's not happening tomorrow. It's like, uh, yeah, it is, because Monday is the first. Like, say what? Yeah. Ooh, that's that's not even right well apparently it is oh well so yeah this year has gone by really really fast like shockingly so yeah i'm not sure where it went me neither because i think i missed part of it (laughs) i know i did i'm just and, and a lot of it has to do because it's my reckoning of time is so tied into the school year because of my daughter and my stepson so it was right before school year was the school year was over and I realized I have no arrangements for the summer (laughs) god (laughs) nothing so yeah that was a scramble like three weeks before school was out to try and figure out somebody to take her oh yeah you probably should have someone to watch your child well and she's she goes to the local YMCA and it's fine. And they're like, Oh sure. We can take her. I'm like, okay, good. But yeah, it was, um, it, everything's just kind of sneaking up on me. This year has gone by so unbelievably fast. And I mean, not that it's a bad thing necessarily. It's just, I, I just felt like I would be doing a lot more, gotten a lot more accomplished this year than I have so far. Yeah. And Strange. yeah, but <laughs> I've actually felt pretty good about some of my my book goals that I made for this year. But before we get started talking about that, let's go ahead and talk about some of our current reads right now. I'm reading Storm Warning by Mercedes Lackey. When we did um, Arrows of the Queen, I kind of just kept going with the, the Herald series. And I've made it to Storm Warning. And I'm reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Because, as we said, we're doing Harry Potter month in July. Yes. Potter Palooza. Potter Palooza. Woohoo! And I've got, you know, the, we're doing the first three books in the first episode, and I've got those read, so I'm not in a super hurry to finish Goblet of Fire right now, but I did start it because, you know, these last four Harry Potter books are kind of hefty. They are really big. In fact, I was I, w- I thought that I was doing really well because I've, I've not had as, as much time to read these as I would have liked, and I thought I was doing really well because was, I had scheduled it out, so I was going to be sure that I would be done with the first three books before we record next week. And then I realized I would have to get through the next two books before we recorded the week after. And I'm thinking (laughs) that's not going to (laughs) work. Not with the amount of time I have to put to it. Yeah. Not as big as those books are. That's why I went ahead and started Goblet of Fire because I don't want to get too far ahead because I don't want everything to run together in my head. But with these books, it's pretty easy to remember what happened in which book. Yeah, this is true. But I didn't want to get too far ahead, but at the same time, I'm like, these are kind of hefty. I might want to stay a little bit ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm in, I just started Prisoner of Azkaban, um, tonight, today, at some point. And so, I'm hoping to finish Prisoner of Azkaban by this weekend, and then I will start, um, Goblet of Fire, either over the weekend or next week at some point but I had forgotten exactly how big those books were (laughs) yeah I pulled Goblet of Fire off my shelf and looked at it and I went wow and I read this in a day when the first time I read it how yeah and I I guess it was because I started with the smaller books like you do and so I'm like oh yeah this is great oh it's so nice to read this stuff and then I just I couldn't remember how many pages the the other two had, and so I pulled them off, and Goblet of Fire had like 730-something pages, and Order of the Phoenix has like 
eight hundred and something, and I was just ugh. That's it's just it, I, the way I was going. It was not going to happen. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I like I said, I read the first three fairly quickly, and I picked up Goblet of Fire, and I went, yeah, this is gonna take a while. But like, the first time I read it, the library, I was at the library the day they got it, and they already had a waiting list. And it was a one-week checkout because there was a waiting list. Right. But since I was there and they hadn't shelved it yet and hadn't told anybody they had it yet, she's like, look, if you can have it back to me in, you know, three days, I'll let you go ahead and take it. So I took it home and I started reading and I read and I read and I read and I finished it and I took it back to her the next day. And when I walked in and handed it to her, her mouth dropped open. (laughs) She was just like, did you actually read that? I was like, yeah. She was like, how? I was like... Well, I was up most of the night, but I finished it. <laughs> Librarians are awesome. Yeah, she was just amazed. I was like, I told you I would have it back in, in within three days. This is within three days. <laughs> yeah, see, all all of the the later Harry Potter books, um, I mean, I can't remember how long it took me to read Goblet of Fire, but I remember because it was Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and Deathly Hallows that I got uh, right when they came out. The other four were already out when I first started reading them. But mm-hmm. so those are the ones that I was really excited to get because I was waiting with everybody else, you know. And I, I mean, I read all of those in one day, the day that I got them, mostly because I had people in my family who were wanting to read them after me. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to finish them quickly because... I, well, especially with Deathly Hallows, I mean, it seemed like every 10 minutes my mom was knocking on my door saying, are you done yet? Are you done yet? <laughs> Do I get to read it now? I mean, not that she couldn't have gone down to the Walmart and gotten her own copy, but, you know, whatever. Well, I didn't actually start doing the midnight releases until Half-Blood Prince. But I know with Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows, because I have the hardbacks on my shelf. Mm-hmm. That I got the midnight, Re- and I will keep those forever because they're first edition, first printings, and when I'm ninety, they might be worth something. <laughs> I remember standing when we, when me and Holly went. I'm pretty sure me and Holly went for Half Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows, but I know when we went for Deathly Hallows, we were standing in line to check out, and I started reading it then, and I was like eleven pages in before I got up there to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it was I read it. It took me a couple of days because that's when I was working at the Chevron and, you know, I was having, I had to go to bed because I had to work the next day and I had to read when I didn't have customers. So it took me a little longer because I couldn't just sit down and read it. Right. But I turned around and read it again immediately as soon as I finished. (laughs) Well, I miss days. I'm kind of sad that we don't have any more Harry Potter midnight release parties to look forward to. I know. I know. That was a lot of fun. But that's why we're going to have a lot of fun with our Harry Potter Palooza because just because the whole series is over and we have all of the books doesn't mean we can't stop having fun with them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to celebrate yep. all of the fun that is Harry Potter. Oh, and I do have to say one other thing. Not about Harry Potter, but just in our what we've currently read. I am so happy I finally read and finished Fire by Kristen Kishore. I have been trying to read and finish that book for a while now. And it's not, it, it was very good. Started off a little bit slow, but it, it ended strong. And I think I might have even liked it better than Graceling. Hmm. But it was just, for a while, it was, I, was just, I wasn't in the mood to read that kind of book. Yeah. But last weekend, I just, I didn't have that much that was going on, and I was really tired and just had had a rough week and was just completely mentally exhausted. So I'm like, you know, heck with this. I just want to relax and read and all of these things that I was going to get done this weekend, forget it. I just want to have a nice relaxing weekend. So I grabbed the book and I said, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to read this thing and I'm going to finish it. And then I did. So it was really good. And once I get more caught up with where we are on all of the Harry Potter stuff, which will probably be a week or two, because <laughs> we've <just> got <laughs> so much fun to read, um, I'm going to go get uh, Bitter Blue from the library. I found out that one of the uh, local branches of the library here has it. So 
I will be reading that one once I have a chance to do so. Maybe once I get through the Harry Potter stuff and the Mercedes Lackey stuff, I can, you know, read fire and actually concentrate on my actual reading goal for this year, which I'm failing miserably at. (laughs) I set my number of books at 60, and I was so far behind on that, I didn't think I would ever catch up. But thanks to Harry Potter and Mercedes Lackey, I am now on track for that goal. I have caught up, so I may still make 60 books this year. I've read... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've read ten books in June. Well, that's pretty good. If I can keep that pace up, I will be well past 60 by the end of the year. <laughs> I doubt I will keep up that pace, but um, I'm on track to finish with 60, which is a good thing. However, my most important goal was to try to read some of the stuff that has sat on my shelves for ever and ever, and I've never read it. Because I need to do a purge. I need to, you know, if this is not stuff I'm interested in reading again, I need to get rid of it and take it to McKay. Yeah, that hasn't happened. (laughs) I haven't touched any of that stuff that I was intending to read. I'm like, yeah, I'm failing miserably at that. But I think the reason for it is last year, I read a lot last year. My total ended up being like almost 80, I think. It was up there. I remember. It was... Actually, I will tell you here in just a second. It was 86, actually. Yeah. And almost all of it was new. Stuff that I'd never read before. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I'm rereading stuff this year. Because it's just like, God, too much new information in my head. Right. (laughs) I, I, I need to read something that's familiar and I don't have to worry about trying to retain this information. Because it's already there. I'm just refreshing it. Right. But I am going to try to read some of that stuff at least before the end of the year because I do want to go back to McKay and I do want to try to make some room on my shelf because the last time I went, I brought home a box full of books that don't have a home. (laughs) So, yeah, I really need to do that so that I have somewhere to put the stuff that I want to keep. Well, I need to try and plan a time, a weekend or something where I can try and get to Chattanooga. Yes. I'm, it's, it's going to happen soon. I still don't know exactly when yet, but it's going to happen. Number one, I want to see this bookstore. Uh, Number two, I really want to see this bookstore. (laughs) And number three, I want to finally meet you. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Like I said, I've got so many series that I need to read to find out if I want to keep them, if I will ever read them again. If I I like them but don't think I'll ever read them again, I'll take them to McKay. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the point of my goal, and I just failed miserably so far i've got six months left i can still read quite a few of them if i put my mind to it this is true i can read you read fast i can read enough to make a home for the stuff that's in this box that's it i'm amending my goal i'm gonna try to read and purge enough to make room on my shelf for what's in this box well there you go that's not quite as daunting a task as trying to read it all (laughs) because yeah, there's maybe maybe 25 books in this box. I can do that. Yeah. Assuming I can part with 25 of the things I read. I'm sure you can. Yeah, there's stuff like the Piers Anthony, the Xanth books. I figure I won't keep those. I mean, I do would like to read them all because, you know, he's one of those really... If you read fantasy, you need to read Piers Anthony at some point. Right. So I would like to read them. But I really don't think I'll keep those. I think they'll be something that I read and then pass on. So that'll get rid of, you know, 20-something books off my shelf right there. Because there's a lot of those. Well, let's see. I set... Well, actually, I they had a topic for Top 10 Tuesday uh, back in January. And it was your, your bookish goals for the year. And I didn't come up with 10 of them because that's just even, that's insane for even me. Yeah. But I came up with five of them. And so the first goal I had was I was planning on reading 70 books this year, which is a larger goal than what I did last year. Last year I I wanted to read 50 books and I exceeded it, which made me happy. And so this year I was going to read 70 I'm actually doing really well on that (laughs) goal. Uh, I've read 45 so far. How I've done this, I'm still not entirely sure. 
Well, you know, part of that could be my fault with stuff like, oh, look, here's book four in a series. We need to read the first three and then talk about them on the podcast. Okay, yeah, I will I will grant you that because, let's see, you did that to me with the uh, Chloe Neal books. And last year you did that with the um, Jennifer Estep books. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then this year I reread all of the David Eddings books. So that put some stuff on there. And then... Yeah, that- Five books there. That's five books. And then I reread all of the Shadow World books. So that was three books plus the new one. That's four there. And then, yeah, it's just, oh, and I, I reread uh, the Mortal Instruments series. That's five. I just gave, I just took my copies of those to my cousin. She wanted to reread them before the movie comes out. Yeah. Because I texted her the other day and I was like, look. You have to have a day free in August so that we can go see the Mortal Instruments. She's like, oh, I will. Baseball's over by then. Her son plays baseball. Oh, okay. And she's like, baseball's over in July, so I'll be free. I'm like, good. Because while I wouldn't mind going to see it with Holly, I don't really think Holly's going to enjoy going to see it with me. (laughs) Because I still can't get her to read the damn book. And if she goes to see it with me and she hasn't read the book and I have, she's going to think I'm a crazy person. Yeah. See, when when the movie comes out, I'm going to have to go with it, go see it first with my mom, because it was my mom who got me reading the books in the first place. Right. If you remember correctly, when we when we talked about them before, she borrowed them from a co-worker, brought them home, and said, these are strange and dark and twisted. You'd love them. Yeah. Okay, then, thanks, Mom. You know, you tried to beat me over the head with them and make me read them. <laughs> yeah, which... You know, and I basically said the same thing. And yeah. I was right, That's wasn't I? Twisted. You'll love them. Yeah. And I was right. Yeah. As was my mother. So, yeah. And so I know that I know that she's probably going to want to see the movie, too. I can't imagine why she wouldn't, because she loved the books, too. So um, we'll probably have to go and see it. And then we'll talk about it on the podcast eventually. I think I have it scheduled somewhere. Yeah. No, the first week of September, I believe. Yeah, because I, I knew it was coming out in August, and I figured that would give us a couple weeks to, to get out and see it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so... If I can't get Chas in that time period, I'll just make Holly go with me, and she'll just have to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I will try my best to go see it within those, you know, that time period so we can talk about it. But like I said, I took them to my cousin, and she's like, I don't know how long it'll take me to read them. I was like, don't worry about it. I said, if I decide I want to read them, I've got them as e-books. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, okay, another goal that I had. I'm not going to lie. You kind of throw a wrench in this one for me. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> okay. See, there was at one point last year where I, and I think I, we, we might have talked about this on the podcast. I'm not, I don't remember now. But we talked about the series that we had started, but then never finished. Yeah. And so I had made it one of my goals to try and finish all of the series that I had started in 2012. And I had a list of them, of like 12 different ones. And I can honestly say that I finished, let's see, I'm... I finished the Iron Face series. I'm not counting the new one that's part of the other series. That's a whole new series. That doesn't count. (laughs) Um, I am planning on reading it, though, so hey. Um, So I finished the Iron Face series by Julie Kiyawa. I finished the Books of Fairy series by um, Maggie Stiefvater, which there's a third one, I think, coming out. There's only two books that are out right now in that series, so I, I think a third one's coming out soon. I don't remember. Anyway, and, oh, and and Mortal Instruments, because I had only read the first three. I hadn't read the last two. Hey, now, I may have thrown a wrench in the works of this, but I did contribute to you being able to finish those. Okay, yes, you did, but that's not the wrench, okay? (laughs) Because I was so um, worried about getting in this problem again by reading these, starting these series and not finishing them. So I made another goal that I told said that I would try and finish all the series that I start this year. (laughs) And what did we just talk about? (laughs) The first of the Mercedes Lackey books. Yeah, you're, 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 yeah. (laughs) I'm in trouble now. (laughs) Well, 
Now, they're not that bad because most of those are, you know, as quick and easy to get through as Arrows of the Queen was. Well, that's good to know. Although I do have to say, you remember I told you um, that my mom, gosh, I'm talking about my mom a lot this episode. I don't know why. <laughs> Hi, mom. I know she's probably listening. Um, <laughs> Hi, Denise's mom. <laughs> uh, she found another smaller used bookstore in our town. And they have a not as big selection as Edward McKay does, but, you know, they have, one of the things that they do have is they have clearance tables. Now, I don't care what it is that you're selling. If you have a clearance table, I'm headed that direction. Yeah. Um, and so with their clearance table, it's all paperbacks, and they're 50 cents to a dollar. And, you know, some of them might be a little bit beat up, but they're all still perfectly readable or they wouldn't sell them. And so when when she heard me talking about Mercedes Lackey and that there were a whole bunch of books that are all tied together, she went and every time she saw one in the 50 cent stack or the dollar stack, she just started buying them. <laughs> so, she, so she got me like six books. You can't eat that though for that price. I'm, I'm telling you, it's not bad. Uh, she got... And one of the ones that she got was the next one after Arrows of the Queen. I don't remember what it's called now. Arrows. Arrows Flight. Arrows what? Flight. Flight. I was going to say Arrows Fall, but that's not, it doesn't sound right. Yeah, that's Arrows Flight. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but it definitely said it was book two. And yeah, then, Arrows Flight, book two. And then she got, uh, let's see, it was the first two books in the one about the Griffins? Mage War, um, Black Griffin and White Griffin? I th- I think so. The three, it's Black Griffin, White Griffin, and Silver Griffin. Oh, I think it was, I think she got me the black and the white one. Yeah, that's book one and two. And then there was another, another one or two that she got. It was something, the the Oath Breakers or something like that? Oathbound and Oath Breakers? Might be. That's Tarma and Kessery. Okay. Those are not actually, I don't know that there's actually heralds in those, but they're set in the same world. They're just in a different country. Okay. And they're really, really good. I love Tarm and Kethry. And Kethry has this, um, it's called a Kyrie. It's kind of a wolf-like creature, and it's kind of attached to her. It's her familiar. Actually, it's supposed to be Kethry's familiar, because Kethry's the sorceress. Uh-huh. And Tarma is a soldier, but it kind of took up with Tarma instead of Kethry, and it can speak. They have mind speech, and he's snarky, and I love him. <laughs> well, he's not really a he. He's a neuter. But, anyway... Oathbound and Oathbreakers are really good. So I have a, I have a start of, you know, Mercedes Lackey books. And usually there's quite a few of them in the libraries around here. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to read all of them anytime soon. But according to my goal, I'm supposed to now. Well, you have the uh, Mage Winds as ebooks because I sent them to you. Yeah, that's that's true. I do have I do. And those have are the ones that come right after the Arrows books, so. But and and see the thing is though, I I was doing a really good job with this because I um I finished the News Flesh trilogy by Mira Grant. I finished the Chloe Neal series because we were reading them for the podcast. I finished the Aborson trilogy by Garth Nix. So and and see I'm I'm even trying to do it even when I don't want to, which. I know that sounds bad, but especially with, and I, I, I hate saying it this way, but towards the end of the abortion series, I was just, I was ready for it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. And, and not that it wasn't, it wasn't good. I mean, it would, it would think it was another si- situation where it wasn't what I felt like reading right then. I just felt obligated to do yeah. so. Um, now, to be fair, you said I threw a wrench in the war. I suggested Arrows of the Queen as a book before you set these goals, I'm pretty sure. I know. Let's not going to so, stop me from blaming you. <laughs> Everybody blame you. You and Marita blame me for everything. Well, that's not entirely true. I blame my ex-husband for a lot of stuff. Okay, well, yeah. If it's book-related, though, or tavern-related. Oh, if it's, if it's book-related, it's all your fault. I'm used to it. <laughs> so, let's see. Um, if I'm going by that... By that goal, I'm looking over my Goodreads list of stuff I've read this year. Um, there's still a couple of series that I need to do. One of them is the the Beautiful Creatures 
series because I've only read that one book and there's yeah. four other ones I think. You know, I heard that the others weren't as good as the first one. Well, that's disappointing. A friend, mine, a friend of mine was reading book two or three, I can't remember, and she posted something about it on Facebook about how it was kind of disappointing because it was nowhere near as good as, you know, the series started out. Right. Huh. Which kind of makes me anxious about reading the rest of them. Well, I'm still going to do it just because. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll, well, I'll try anyway. I cannot say that I will at... It's not often that I don't finish a book when I start it. Unless it's something that I've read a thousand times like the Bulgari ad. Sometimes I'll pick those up and, you know, kind of browse through them and not actually read them and finish them. But I don't really worry about that because, like I said, I've read it a thousand times. But as far as something that I've never read, it's not often that I don't finish a book. I may not finish a series. If the first book is disappointing, I may just give up. Right. Well, that's that's how I feel about um, the Elizabeth Hayden books. To be completely yeah. honest, I mean, I, I, I didn't. It's it takes a lot for me to say that I dislike a book. I mean, they have to do some pretty. There has to be some really bad writing going on for me to say I I dislike a book. I hate a book. I mean, even if the characters do something that I don't like, or if the author does something that I don't like, I can still find something in the writing or something in the plot that I appreciate. Um, and maybe it's just because I'm trying to be a writer. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, this is really hard. And even if there's a lot of things in the book that I don't like, I know how much time and effort went into it. So I'm going to find something to appreciate out of this. I'd make a terrible editor because I'd be too nice. <laughs> but it was just, I don't know. I just, I, I guess I didn't dislike Rhapsody, but it didn't really make me want to keep going. Well, so that one is not going to go in the series that I'm going to finish because... Quite frankly, I barely finished the first book. I found on my second go around that I don't like them as much as I did the first time. Really? But at the time that I was reading them the first time, I was still in that all I read is fantasy phase. Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't read anything. I didn't read mystery. I didn't read science fiction. I didn't read young adults. I didn't read anything except fantasy. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my thing. So I really, really enjoyed them then. And, and this time around, I mean, I'm still working on Destiny. Mostly because it's killing me because I can't remember who the host of the demon is. But anyway. <laughs> and I haven't read on it in a while because I've been reading Mercedes Lackey and Harry Potter. I'll get back to it eventually. And I do intend to reread the entire series because that's one of those series that if I don't feel as attached to it by the end as I did the first time I read it, I'll probably take them to McKay. And that'll free up a lot of space on my shelf because they're all quite hefty. They are big. They're all that. Well, the last one, is, the last few are not as big. But, you know, I could fit, you know, nearly probably eight or ten normal size books in the space that six of those are taken up. Yeah. They're, they're so, hefty. Yeah. So, I mean, while I do plan on finishing, the, rereading the series, those may get thrown in the trade box mm -hmm. because they're really they're not as the first time I read them it was just like oh my god these are amazing I love them I gotta have them all and and on this go around it's just like yeah it's annoying me because I don't know who the host of the demon is and I don't really know why we're having to go through all this other garbage just to figure this out but it's, it's almost enough to make me want to start skipping pages but yeah I, I can completely understand that because I'm not as into them as I was the first time around yeah, and, and I've I've started to get away from the epic fantasy stuff as much as I used to. Like, See, I have in the I mean, you had, you'd mentioned that too, yeah. Because um, for a while that was mostly what I read, and now I've I've kind of gotten more into the more urban fantasy, and um, and I've actually moved a little bit off of just the the fantasy stuff, and some of it's more. I think they consider it more like your paranormal instead of your fantasy. Yeah. If they split the genre up all different directions, but okay, um, it's there's so many different classifications of it now. But yeah, I'm yeah. like you. I've moved into a lot of the urban and paranormal stuff yeah. with like you know Chicago Land Vampires and then right um, Rachel Vincent's uh, Soul Screamer series. You know, I and I think a lot of the reason I've moved into stuff like that was from watching Supernatural. It could be. 
because I started watching Supernatural and then I started reading books with a supernatural bent to them. Plus, I got into stuff like the Stephanie Plum books by Janet Ivanovich, which are fluffy, very fluffy, but they're so they're fun. Mm -hmm. They're something that you can sit down and read. They're none of them are very long, and they're all super easy to read, and you can read one in a day. And there's something when you want something that you don't really have to concentrate on. <laughs> right. I mean, that's, that, and I'm not saying that in a detrimental way. A lot of people think if you say something like that about a book, you're saying it, you know, in a negative way. I'm not, because sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes you want fluff. Oh, and just exactly. Because it's fluff doesn't mean it's bad. No. They're good fluff. They're entertaining. They're funny, you know. And I got into those. And then the J.D. Robb, the Eve Dallas books, those are, those are not as fluffy as the Stephanie Plum books. They have a little more substance to them, but they're still not, you know, something that I have to concentrate a lot on. Although I do get a kick out of trying to figure out, solve the murder before they, you know, before the book tells me who did it. Right. So, I mean, I, I've got into stuff like the cop procedural type stuff, which I watch a lot of cop procedural TV shows. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my reading has sort of branched out quite a bit. So I'm not as into, I mean, I still love my fantasy. Oh, I do too. But I'm not as, oh my God, I can't read anything else. I love this. and This is all I'm going to read as I used to be. Which I blame my parents for because, you know, they beat me over the head with Lord of the Rings until I gave in and read it. And then your life was never the same. It really wasn't. After that, it was like, give me fantasy now. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and I think for a while, too, since that was all I read, I kind of got burnt out on it. Yeah, that all And happens. because, and this, this may sound strange, but you, I found sometimes that I have to think a lot more. When, when reading epic fantasy, and, and science fiction, too, to a certain degree, because of all of the world building. Yeah. And you don't have a frame of reference for either places they're talking about or things that they're talking about. Whereas, for example, uh, the Mortal Instruments series, those take place in New York. So yeah, you don't really build that one. Yeah, you don't kinda... need to... You don't need to think as hard and try and figure out where they are. You're like, okay, well, sure, that's where they are. And then all of these other weird things happen, but you still have a, a frame basic frame. Yeah, exactly. And so you don't have to try and remember, okay, well, they're here, and now they're going to this other place, which is, how how is that related to here? It's like, you know, if they're in Manhattan and they're going to Brooklyn, I, I know where that is. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the thing I like about the Mercedes Lackey books is her – world building is very gradual mm -hmm. i mean you start out in the arrows books you i'll say 90 percent of the setting in those three books is in haven mm -hmm. you know you don't you hear her mention these other countries and you do finally in the third one talia and chris go to rethwellen i believe it is or hardorn i don't remember anyway they go to the neighbor the they go to the next country, you know, right across the border. And you don't really, she doesn't really set anything in these other countries until she has something that she can put a lot of the setting in that country. She doesn't bounce back and forth a lot. You know, she, she kind of tries to keep the action sort of centralized into one area so that you don't have to, you know, think, well, you know, how does that relate to here? It's kind of gradual. Uh-huh. Until the later books, you know, in the that she wrote, when you, she assumes that you've read all the others, so you already know why Kars was an enemy of Valdemar, and where Kars is in relation to Valdemar, and where the Forest of Sorrows is, and, you know, you, you know these things because you've read all these other books. Right. It, it's very gradual, and it's very well done, so that it's not a lot to remember at one time. So you're not as overwhelmed by it, which helps. Yeah. Yeah, um... Okay, so let's let's branch off just a little bit. Um, so we're both working pretty well towards some of our goals. Uh, well, one goal I haven't even touched so far, and that was to read at least 15 books off of the 1,001 books you must read before you die list. Yeah, I haven't done any. <laughs> but that's okay. I still have six months. Um, this is true. So we'll see. You can read 
If I can read 10 books in one month, you can read 15 in six. Yeah, well, I hope to read more than that. And I don't know. I just, I like that big kind of definitive list thing. And I don't know. And every time I've pulled a book off of that list, it's always been something that's been really surprising that I've liked. So I don't know. I'll get to that at some point. Well, uh, one thing I wanted to find out on our kind of mid-year wrap-up is what has been or what have been some of your favorite books that you've read this year so far? Well, I haven't read that much new stuff, and I really, you know, hate to say that something like Mercedes Lackey, because we all know that that's, you know, one of my favorites. Um, probably House Rules by Chloe Neal. Right. Definitely, because I love Chloe Neal, and that book was awesome. And I can't wait for uh, whatever the name of the one, Wild Thing. Oh, that's, out that's the one about the shifters, right? Um, No, that's another Chicagoland Vampires. Oh, okay. But there is a, she is writing a book about the shifters, which just made me squee in delight when I found out. <laughs> because I love the shifters. <laughs> they are pretty and, awesome. Yeah, they're, they are. And... Maybe, probably Graceling. Graceling was really good. I don't really have a lot to go on. Like I said, I hate to say any of the stuff that I've reread because, you know, if I'm rereading it, then obviously it's, you know, pretty good. Mm-hmm. The Seven Deadly Sins by Corey Taylor. I talked about this right after I finished reading it. Um, Corey Taylor, for those who don't know, is the lead singer of Slipknot and Stone Sour. He's a very interesting critter. <laughs> very. And... If you're under the age of, under the age of 18, I should say, but, you know, there are 16 and 17 year olds that can handle it, but for the safety's sake, we're going to, if you're under the age of 18, don't read his book, (laughs) because it's, it's very vulgar, and there's lots of bad words in it, but, uh, if you're 18 year older, definitely, definitely read it, because he's ridiculously intelligent, Uh I've watched a lot of his interviews and stuff, he's very eloquent, when he talks, they call him the great big mouth. He has a lot to say. <laughs> but, you know, he, he's very intelligent and very eloquent when he speaks. I mean, he's he spoke at Oxford University. Wow. Yeah. And you can watch all of that on YouTube. It's really cool. He uh, spoke to the students about the difference between doing what you're good at and doing what you love. Mm-hmm. And which one you should do when you're trying to decide what you're going to go to school for. It was a very interesting talk. Sounds like it. Definitely, if you're, you know, just entering college, it's definitely something that you should look into and listen to. Because he makes some good points. He's like, you know, if you do what you're good at, then you're eventually going to love what you do. He said, but if you try to do what you love, then you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. Huh. And he, he kind of backs it up, and he makes some very good points. It's definitely worth watching if you're, you know, starting your college career. But um, his book, The Seven Deadly Sins, he sort of breaks down what the seven deadly sins are and why they shouldn't be sins, because mostly they're just part of being human. And if you really want seven deadly sins, then it should be things like murder, child abuse, rape, you know, Things that if, if he's like they're seven deadly sins. If they're sins and they're deadly, they should be crimes as well. Huh. Okay. Which he has a point. Yeah. So I mean, it was really interesting because he's an atheist. I mean, he he makes no bones about the fact that he's an atheist, and it it's it's interesting. It's a very interesting book. But if you're easily offended, don't read it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because the F word shows up in it a lot, <laughs> and he he makes some some very which statements about organized religion that could be construed as offensive if you're easily offended. So stay far away if you're the type of person to be easily offended by something. If you're like me and it's very difficult to offend you with anything, go for it. <laughs> it's funny. It'll make you laugh. And he, he makes some very good points. So that was that one. I'd say that one is probably my favorite that I have read this year. I'm glad I read it. Well, I was I was looking... Again, looking over my stuff on Goodreads. I don't know where I would be without Goodreads right now. I really don't. Isn't it wonderful? It really is. Because otherwise, I would never be able to remember any of this stuff. 
Uh, but I just actually today just posted a blog about this. I think my favorite book I've read so far this year was The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. It's so good. I I am just in love with that book. I want to reread it so bad, but I can't right now. <laughs> hey, we should uh, eventually do it for the podcast. I would be good with that. Because I have it. I've read it, and I would like to read it again. So we can we can find a time to do that on the podcast, and it gives you an excuse to reread it, and it's me excuse to reread it. So... <laughs> And I think it would it would be a good one for the podcast because it it it's another one of those that's kind of way out in left field to the kind of stuff we normally talk about on here. Yeah, but it was, and and there's so there's just so much. That's one of those books that you just can completely get immersed in this other world. Yeah, and I mean it's just, it's just like. It amazed me when I read it because it was it was something to be honest it's a book that if I walked into a bookstore and saw it on a shelf and read the blurb I probably wouldn't have picked it up but I'm part of a group on Goodreads the it's uh, Blue Stocking Alchemy it's people who love Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab perfume oils and that was a book that that was we did a group discussion on and the reason it got suggested, and if you read the th- the thank yous, she mentions Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Yes. That's why we read it, because, you know, we knew she was a fan of the lab. And I was blown away by how it sucked me in. It's amazing. And it's so atmospheric. And so yeah. she, she's one of the few authors that I've ever read that just plays into every single one of your senses it's very visual you can you have all the sounds it's almost like you can hear them the way she describes them the way everything smells like you were saying she was really a big fan of these perfume oils um i think you even said when we talked about this book once before that she was using kind of describing like particular scents from a particular collection of these yes and and it and it shows and it's, it was, it just, it was one of the books that, one of the few books in recently that have just completely blew me away. I mean, there's a lot of books that I read and I've read them and I'm like, oh, that's a really good book. I really like that book. But this was one of the few books where I just put the book down and I'm like, that was amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. This woman needs to teach a descriptive writing course somewhere. Yes. And see, the thing is, is that, Maybe it was because I was reading this right after, it looks like. looks like I read Night Circus very soon after I read A Discovery of Witches. Now, don't get me wrong, I liked A Discovery of Witches, too. But that was, my main complaint with that book was that it was so wordy and so over-described and over-detailed, and it was just... After a while, it was like, okay, you need to take a step back a little bit because it was making the plot itself start to lag. Yeah. And which which really kind of frustrated me, actually, because the plot was really good and I wanted it to continue, but I really didn't care, like, what kind of food they were eating or how many times Diana had to stop and make some tea. Uh, you know, it was, it, it was slowing everything down, but... With the night circus, the circus is almost its own character in a way. It really is. And it's it's constantly changing, and different tents are appearing, and there's different shows and different just amazing things in each one, and it can be different every single time. And I love there was just these little sections kind of in between the bigger chapters where it drops into this this little second-person point of view which is not used very often and it's really difficult to get right but that's where I mean everybody sees it where you where you're reading it it says I did this I did that or he said this and she said that but this one is you step through the gates and that now you are in this it's it's using you as opposed to I or he or she well, I think the reason that it works so well is because she did it sparingly. Yeah, it was just these little tiny miniature chapters. And so it was it was a way that 
you as the reader were now at the circus. And you had these other chapters that were telling the story, and yeah, there was this whole, you know, beautiful romance and all of this mystery and and trying to figure out how Marco and Celia were going to make things right again and and that was all very compelling, but at the same time it was just the circus was someplace that you wanted to be. You wanted to be part of the people that wore the red scarves and followed them all around Europe. And I just I could not get over how good that book was. Like I said, it, it it amazed me because it's not the sort of thing that I normally like, but it was so good. I mean, it was one of those when I finished, I'm like, oh, my God, I have to find somebody else and make them read this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because I have to have somebody that I can discuss this with. And I made my friend Paulette read it, and she loved it. So, I mean, it was it was one of those, you know, every now and then you read those, you read books, and you're like, man, I wish I knew somebody else who had read this. It'd be nice to talk about it. And then you read those books, it's like, oh, my God, I have to find somebody and make them read this if I have to give them mine. <laughs> yeah. And I've... that's how it was with Night Circus. It's like, I have to find somebody else and make them read this because, oh, my God. Yeah. It it was it was really, really amazing. And it was, and and, and the thing is that made me a little bit frustrated with myself is that I asked for this book for Christmas. And I got it for Christmas, and it sat on my shelf for uh, over five months because I just didn't get to it. And now I'm looking at it, I'm like, why didn't you read this earlier? There are not many people in the world that could have written this book and me loved it as much as I do. Because it, it's it's one of those things where she got everything exactly right to make it work. Uh-huh. No, it was, it was perfect. And see... She doesn't have anything else listed, like, in the works on on Goodreads, which makes me sad, because I want her to write something else. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely be willing to read something else by her, because... Yeah. she is quite talented, and this was her very first book, too, so... Yeah. Well, first and only, this is all that's on there, so... Yeah. I, I hope she writes something else. I hope that this isn't it, because she has a gift. Yes. I mean, that, she is, I've never in my life read another book that was, could put you in the scene, make you feel like you're there with so few words. Yes. And that was, and like, again, that was why I, especially coming off of A Discovery of Witches, where there was like a hundred extra words when only three would probably have sufficed, the, the way that it was crafted was just so well done because she didn't need to have a whole bunch of words and go into like minute detail of everything exactly how it was. It was just enough and it just drew you in and what she didn't say you could easily imagine in your mind. Right. She left just enough of it up to interpretation that and I think that helped pull you into the story as well, because you had to use your imagination somewhat. Uh, when, especially, I mean, in the circus, with, with all of the different things. She described it, but it was the way it was done was so that you ha you had to try and visualize it and try and hear it. And like I said, using all the senses. So yeah, that would have to definitely be my favorite book that I've read so far today, or this year. Well, hopefully, you know, by the time we do our end of year wrap up, I'll have more than, you know, nine books I've read that I've never read before <laughs> instead of just a whole bunch of rereads. But like I said, last year, um, I, it was the other way around. By the end of 86 books, I think like nine of them were rereads and, you know, 70 something of them were new stuff that I'd never read before. But I was going to the library like every other week last year. Yeah. In fact, I, think, know, I, I think you kept saying, I need to quit going to the library because I have a whole bunch of new stuff at home that I need to read. Right, but I was going to the library every other week because their young adult section was growing by leaps and bounds. And I hate to see how much they have now because I haven't been in six months. They're going to have so much stuff. And if I, if I go, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to come home with an armful of books. <laughs> of course you are. Cause, but I'm going to have to go, because once I read Fire, I want to read Bitter Blue, and I know they have it. They had it at the end of last year. I saw it on the shelf. 
And when I go get Bitter Blue, I'm going to come home with four other things, too. Because their limit, you can check out, is five. Which is like, I could read more than five, but we'll roll with it. Sometimes I was going once a week. I would get five and be back in a week. But I know that'll happen. I'll go to get Bitter Blue, and I'll find something that I've been, that's on my list of stuff that I really want to read. Uh-huh. And I'll come home with it. Yeah. And when I do that, it's going to start me again going to the library every other week. See, I need to start going to the library now because I have been, I've been buying a lot of books this year so far. And it's, it's, I mean, I've, I've not been, I've been getting a lot of them used and I've been getting some of them. You can, you can find really good sales, uh, for Kindle books if you pay attention. You can pick up a Kindle book for like, you know, 99 cents or $1.99, but still, it all adds up after a while. Yeah, it And really I does. really need to quit doing that. <laughs> See, that's why I love McKay. I wait until I have a box full or two box fulls, and I get enough in trade to cover whatever I find and bring home with me. So it really doesn't cost me anything. Yeah, I've, I've been trading in more at, at, at our used bookstore, and, and that has helped. But, yeah, I, I need to cut back. <laughs> what I would really like to do is if I could, you know, ever find a job, if I ever do find a job, I'm going to try to get back into book mooch, which is awesome. Basically, you list books that you have and don't want anymore, and someone comes along and will request that book. Well, you package it up and send it to them, which you can send a book, media mail, anywhere in the United States for, like, a dollar fifty. Right. So you're not out very much for the postage. You earn a point for sending the book. Well, you can use that point to find a book on somebody else's shelf that you want. And you use that point to request that book, and they package it up and mail it to you. Okay. So basically, it's a huge book swap circle. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And I got really into it for a long time. I got the entire, almost the entire, all but like three or four books, the very series by Catherine Kerr. From somebody on Bookmooch. And they're library copies, library paperback copies, so they've got the library stickers on the binding, but I don't care. Oh, right. They've also got the plastic coating on the cover so they won't tear and they're in really good condition. Well, there you go. So, I mean, and all you're ever out is the postage to send a book. Now, you, there are international users, and if you send a book international, you get three points for it instead of just one. Okay. When I first started, I was doing international. I sent books to Germany, Australia. Um, I sent several to Canada because you can send to Canada just about as cheap as you can send in the United States. So, I mean, you know, it, it's a really good way to get rid of stuff that you don't want and know that it's going to a good home. Right. Because I have that problem. I like to know that my books are going to a good home. It's like it's like pets. I have to know that they're going to a good home. Right. I understand. You want somebody who's going to care about them as much as you do. I loved it, and I would love to get to doing it again. But, you know, I've got to find a job so that I have the money to pay the postage. Yeah, that would be helpful. But like I said, you know, it's still, it's a lot cheaper. I mean, a new, books are ridiculously expensive. I used to think, you know, that Australia had it. And Australia's books are way ridiculously expensive compared to, I mean, a paperback book over there is like 20 bucks. Oh, good grief. Yeah, it's, it's bad. You know, and I remember when a brand new paperback book was, you know, five ninety nine or six ninety nine. Yeah. Now they're seven ninety nine and eight ninety nine. Mm-hmm. For a mass market paperback. Trade paperbacks are usually fifteen. So I mean anything that'll get me cheap books, I'm down with that. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, book boots, that sounds really interesting. I I I'd heard you talk about it before, but I've never done it myself. I might have to look into that though. So it looks like we've We've done mostly pretty good so far in 2013. I could have done better. Well, then you know what to do for the rest of the year. Well, see, what got me caught up was my internet getting cut off for a while. That would do it. It's amazing how much reading you can do when you're not distracted by things like Facebook and Lord of the Rings Online. (laughs) Yeah. Well, then I guess uh, we will go ahead and wrap it up for tonight. Um... So next week, we begin our Harry Potter Palooza! Yay! So yeah, next week, we'll be talking about Sorcerer's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, 
and Prisoner of Azkaban, which means I need to get reading. Yes. I am way I, far behind, but I will catch up. Just so you know, there will be movie complaints involved in this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I can't imagine that there won't be. Especially Prisoner of Azkaban, because I have a love-hate relationship with that movie. Oh, yeah. More hate than love. Yeah. So, anyway, be sure to join us for that. Uh, if you want to join in with any of our discussions uh, regarding Harry Potter or regarding any of your reading goals so far this year, uh, you can contact us by email. Our email address is bibliophiles.podcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter. We are at bibanonpodcast. And then we are also, we're getting ready to do something a little bit different with our official website, which is at www.bibliophiles-anonymous.com. Just this was actually I, your idea. Yes, I had, a, I had a moment of genius. They come along every so often. <laughs> Um, as we've been getting, you know, ARCs from NetGalley. And the thing about it is, when I get on there and I look at these titles, I see a lot of stuff that I would really like to read, but I know that we don't have time to dedicate episodes to all of these on the podcast. So I decided what I'm going to do is, if I see something that I really want to read, I'm going to go ahead and request it, and I will write and post a review on the website. You know, I will still mention the book on the nearest episode to when I finish it, but we just won't be dedicating an episode to all of them. Now, we still will be doing, you know, several episodes throughout the course of a year for the ARCs that we get that we both feel, you know, right, be a good episode. But I'm going to start it because I have a lot more time to read than you do. <laughs> I don't have a husband and two children. So... That, we're going to start doing that because it's, it's a little more variety on the website. And, you know, the, the deal with NetGalley is they just expect you to review the book in some way. Right. And it's still on the website that's listed in our profile, so it counts in my book. Oh, I think it does. They, they do uh, issue ARCs to a lot of bloggers. So yeah. um, basically our official website is not just going to be with the episodes and the show notes. It's going to have... Uh, more, a more dedicated uh, content. Yeah, it's going to have, I'm going to do the reviews, and if I find, you know, I think I may start if I find anything book-related that I find interesting, I may make a post about it, because we kindly figured out that I didn't actually get invited as a contributor to the blog when we thought I did. No, <laughs> but you're set up now, so that's yes. good. <laughs> yeah, so I can actually start posting things now, since I actually have time to sit around on the computer and Look at this stuff. Right. So, yeah, we're going to start doing that. I, I, it, I don't know. It came to me. I was half asleep, and I was like, you know, there's a lot of these on here that I would really like to read. Or if I stumble across any of those that are like book six in a series, <laughs> I can just request it and read it and post a review and not, you know, make you read six books in two weeks. Right. So, yeah, I not, think it'll be Not that I it. minded that much, but, you know. It, well, it's a little crazy. You know, if we had a little more time to do that, it would have been different. That's, that's true. So, yeah, definitely uh, be on the lookout for that. So, uh, hopefully within the next week, at least, uh, there will be a whole bunch of new content. Yay! And more content, not just once yeah. a week. There'll be, there'll be more stuff on there. Yeah. And, you know, I might, I, I have a blog where I put reviews and things like that, but I might, I might throw some stuff up on the, on the show website too. Just, you know. You can always not. post a link yeah. back to your blog. Yeah. Your book reviews. So, we'll see. But, yeah, we're going, we're going to try and, and make better use of it now. Yeah, diversify. Yes, that's what we're going to do. So, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Yep. So... We will see everybody next week for some Harry Potter time. And until then, thanks for listening. See ya. Bye. Pretend like I'm energetic. Get her done. Yeah. Hi. Right. <clears throat> Welcome to Bibliophiles Anonymous, episode 39. I'm Denise. 
and I'm Jess and tonight we are looking at some of okay I'm not even ready to talk <laughs> it's gonna be a long evening <laughs> bloopers <laughs> we should start doing bloopers we should we should like collect all our bloopers we and just... every so often post a blooper reel 